Today on Drawbly, Abby is drawing the art of sanguine. Click that subscribe button if you're new around here. And comment below with ideas of what we can do to improve as artists. Share some of your art online with hashtag Drawbly, and you are doing what we might call an artist study? A master study. Oh, a master study. Yes, well, that's what they call it when you just copy somebody else's art. They call it a master study, to be polite, I suppose. Um, I don't, I, mm, yes. And usually you're studying one of the great masters. <laughs> but I think Sanguine is a master of, of a lot of things. Very fair. Lines, form, uh, this subtle, subtle shading that they've done of the body here, which is something I don't know how they do. I seriously don't. I don't know what brush to use for that. Anyway, let's get into this. So I am- There is some very subtle, like, faint shading going on for sure. Yeah. And everything's like the same color as the paper. It's very cool. Yeah, it's so cool. I started following this artist on Instagram because you were following them. That was a really great place to launch my artists on Instagram that I'm following uh, <laughs> section because you already followed a ton of great ones. So I basically got on there and we looked through all the artists you follow and I followed a lot of them as well. So I've been following Sanguine now for quite some time and I think that he is awesome. He is a 26 year old artist, I believe from New York who wants oh. to live in Norway. I didn't stalk him. This is all public information. In public his information, totally, from, yes. that you found on his uh, private Facebook page. <laughs> no, it was in a saved AMA on Instagram, ask me anything. And uh, Oh, I, I want to do a, a saved AMA on Instagram, ask me anything. You should, you should. How old is Follygon? 45. You're not 45. <laughs> um, Sanguine is self-taught, uh, most inspired by an artist named Jacob Rebecca, I think. Jacob Rebecca. Who's Jacob Rebecca? I looked up their art station. They're a freelance illustrator who has a very distinct, very gritty style, but a really cool mastery of color. Actually, I find them to be very different from Sanguine, and I actually prefer Sanguine's art um, because I, I just find it more aesthetically pleasing, whereas mm -hmm. uh, Jacob Rebecca, who has a mastery of color and shape and many, many Maybe things. Maybe Rebe Rebecca Jacob? Nope. Nope. Okay. It's right. spelled J A K U B. Oh, of course. Yeah. Jakub. Jakub. Oh, you know what? I'm probably mispronouncing it horribly. Yeah, I'm probably am too. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I wish I could paint like sanguine here. I love the lines. I think the line feels very true to like where my strengths already lie. Is kind of like more towards line work. Um, wow, flex, 45 minutes. You're just like, look what I can do. No, that was not meant to be a flex. That was <laughs> like a, oh my gosh. Uh, but see, it was, it was hard enough just copying somebody else's work. Can you imagine designing those shapes and characters? I mean, it takes a long time, a, a lot of past experience to get to the point where something like that comes naturally to yes. you. Yes. And I mean, this is probably what it takes to build that experience is copy people, make, draw your own gestures. Like I was doing on quick poses the other day. Um, a lot of the AMA was like, well, where did you learn anatomy so well? And they were like, YouTube, Pinterest, and the mirror. Um, which I thought was fun. <laughs> yeah. They had a lot of funny answers in their AMA. <laughs> Seems like a very funny person. But yeah, no, this was this was so great to get to do. Now, after I finished this, I tried one of their colored pieces, like where they actually go in and color things. Mm -hmm. And I, I think was they're pretty subtle with their color, if I remember they right. They are. And actually that very subtlety downplayed. was very hard to hit. Like I desaturated and desaturated and desaturated and it still came across way too bright. Like Ooh. It was crazy. I really could not figure it out. But I read the AMA after I did the piece, and I did find a helpful hint from them there. Ooh, what was it? Which was, they, he starts with one like strong, bold color, and every hue shift, his rule is for himself that it, the hue shifts have to be very much more desaturated than that one strong uh, color. Okay, yeah, that, that is a very, I think, common thing with concept design. Uh, you have one color that is like your key color mm -hmm. that drives fo focus. Uh, that's like your most saturated color. It's mm. so like you'll have a really saturated red headband on a character, mm. but you won't have that down by the ankles because you want the focus up on the face. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I like the way that Sanguine draws hands. I like the talony shapes on the one I just drew, but I also like these regular hands on these other people. I just draw the middle girl in this, by Regular the way. hands. Yes. And I could not, for the life of me, get these subtle shifts in skin tone. I don't know how they do that. Um, no one does. It's a mystery. It's probably like an airbrush, but just really much better applied than I know how to do. I don't know. He said he starts with like big, bold strokes and for color and like brings it down from there. But for the life of me, I can't see any strokes. It's such like such smooth gradients. I don't know. So tell me about like why, what made you decide to do like an artist study in general? Because we've been working on our coursework like nonstop, I think for the past like three months, four months, a long time. Yeah, probably just a little bit of ennui, just, you know, drifting around, having a couple days where I'm like, well, I don't know what to draw, trying to draw and nothing coming of it. So deciding that maybe the best course of action for me right now to stay motivated on my art journey is to do something that's just easily fun, which for me is just getting in there on the art of somebody who I really appreciate um, and trying to do a study on them. I thought that the complexity of the clothing that these characters wear was really, really fun to dive into because it's deceptively simple. Um, I I think so. And then you actually get in there and draw everything and you realize they've actually put a lot of time and care into the folds of the belt. There are a lot of things going on around the waist with the belts. Yes. <laughs> There's like a lot of complexity there. There is, and it was so fun to get into. Can you imagine sculpting that? How would that be? Uh, it would It would take a minute. Uh, that is a funny thing, though, that you mentioned, because so many, well, almost every student that joins my uh, program, the Appeal Academy, when they're picking a character to translate to 3D, they do and say exactly what you just did and said, which is, oh, you know, I picked this character, it looked pretty easy, but they just don't think about like these little things and how complex they are and how long they take. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, when you're looking at this character in the middle, the la like one of the last things that you focus on are all those belts and complexities down there. And that's why you don't really like look at them or think about them too much. Because mm -hmm. your focus is up near the top. There's this big period of warm rest mm -hmm. uh, with the arms and upper chest into the face. Mm -hmm. And then there's like these bits of complexity that frame it. Mm -hmm. So the, the complexity is like a side thing. It's like icing. It doesn't really add a ton to the image because the main focus is on the face, but it is there and it does add to the character. Yeah, I'd love to get to a point where I'm so like relaxed and good at what I do that I can like just throw in icing like that and uh, just have it be part Icy of my fun cake. process. Yeah, yeah. and the, the ice is, I think the icing is an apt comparison because it should be one of those like final things that you do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you got to focus on the, the big, most important stuff first. Yes, like the overall form, maybe some of that color language. I don't know. The coloring was Color so... language. I don't I know. like that. Yeah, yeah. I what would you say their dominating color is here? And what's what else, what's the desaturated piece? I thought the background ended up being kind of like the big uh, color. It's definitely the, a bright background. Mm -hmm. Uh but I would say the dominating color of all of this is like mostly warm. It's mostly yeah. orange. Especially on that middle one, the other two side characters have a lot more coolness applied to their skin, especially the one on the left. Yeah, so it's it's orange flowing through like gray toward red toward, um, toward like purple. Mm -hmm. And because of that on the skin, it tends to make those areas look cooler as it fades through gray. Um, Marco Bucci has some really great videos on color and flowing, like how colors flow through gray when they transition and how you can use that in your painting. It's really interesting and uh, in my opinion above like my my painting pay grade at this time. Mm -hmm. But uh, some good information there that I'm sure many could benefit yeah, from. Yeah, I'll have to rewatch that. I think I watched it a long time ago and it seems like it's about time to rewatch it now that I'm, you know, slightly better at what I do starting now. Starting to think than about color to more. Yeah, starting to think about color more. Also though, like it is so much work to create clean line work. There's, it, is, it is. There's got to be some 
some things. There's got to be a secret. Not a secret, <laughs> but just like I'm. I'm sure I'm making it harder on myself than I need to. I'm sure there's something where I could like make this a little easier on myself. Um, versus going back and erasing all my little like feathered out tips that got away a little bit. I don't know. Maybe not though. I it might be the brush that you're using. If you use something that's like a little more ink penny that uh, isn't ink is it, penny, yeah, ink pen like that uh, is going to keep that really fine tip. I don't know. This is an inking pen on Procreate. <laughs> a technical pen actually. Maybe you'll have to show me what you're talking about. Maybe I don't understand. Yeah. I could use one with more flow, maybe that would be a little more control, but the more flow I add, the less I'm able to get like these really quick, like like jerky movements. And I think those are very appealing too. So for colors here, it looks like you definitely did not sample from the image. No, I didn't, because I didn't have the uh, reference on my screen. It was ah, actually on my phone. Nice. Um, yeah, so just, it, and mine ended up obviously a lot more saturated than the original, but mm -hmm. hey, to be fair, it was on my phone, a little small anyway. <laughs> Um, yes, uh, when colors get small, it's very hard to tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, here's my sanguine study. Um, it just did this in a, I think it, each one was an hour and a half. And you did a really good job on these. these I these think in so terms fun. of accuracy, that first ink sketch is, is very close to the original. I love that angle. It's such a unique angle to draw a body at. It's that kind of from the back, kind of bent over like that. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I think both of these look really good. You did a fantastic job, and I hope that you were able to learn and take away a lot from these. I yeah. think just watching it back myself, I definitely did. Awesome. Well, if you want to take something back, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> and share some of your work <laughs> online with hashtag Drawbly. Comment and below, of course. Of course. With ideas of how we can improve as artists. We Abby is so mad steps. at me. Because I've no. stolen her line on like the past three I videos. I stole your line there though, so it's fair. And this is the part where we say goodbye. Goomba. What if I had said Goomba there and stolen your true line? Well, you can't because only cool people can say Goomba. Oh, okay. <laughs>